Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Open House three-day live event, June 11th through the 13th. Hi, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? If you could please type a one in the chat box if you can hear me, and also if you could see the share screen. Hey, Kurt, how are you? Hi, Charles, Eva, Ron. Hi, Ron. Al. Uh, hello, everyone. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. We've switched from the webinar room to a Zoom room, and I find that it's really awesome. So um, very, very nice um, sound and also video on this room. All right, everybody. So let's get started. Okay. My name is Anka Metcalf. For those of you that are new, I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education firm specialized in trading and educating individuals how to day trade and swing trade the futures and the equities market. I have been doing this professionally for the last 16 years. I've been trading my own accounts uh, and I am a futures day trader and a futures swing trader and an equity swing trader. I love swing trading and I also day trade. I love to dedicate my mornings to day trading the futures indices. And we're gonna be doing a lot of chart reviews today. How does that sound? Okay, so I have uh, about 25 slides for you guys, and then we're just going to roll on charts. And uh, uh, feel free to ask any questions. I have my question pane right here, and uh, I could see what you're typing. More than happy to answer all your questions, uh, setups, etc. Anything that you guys want to talk about today, feel free to post it here in the room. If we have the time within this hour, we're going to hit the subject, right? We're going to uh, go to your topics as well. Uh, so I was saying that I have been doing this professionally for 16 years. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come from investment banking, where I dedicated about 10 years of my life. All right. So I'm the designer also of an institutional proprietary trading system. What that means is that I'm not the creator. And in fact, technical analysis is out there. And not only that, but basically, if you learn technical analysis, you pretty much have a pretty good idea of what's happening in the market. But if you really want to... If you want to really want to take the step towards consistency and profitability, there's a little bit more that uh, that you need to know besides technical analysis. And therefore, I'm here to tell you about price support resistance, right? So price support resistance is much more than meets the eye. There are basically seven layers of price support resistance. And you probably do not know this, but in ongoing trends, some of the most important support zones, and even in, uh, in this current con context of today's uh, trading activity, uh, the, more, the sustainable support zones that I have on watch and that are heftier and stronger than major support zones are the minor support zones in the market. Why? because they have been pre previously tested. Tested, break through, and now they come to that retest level. So price support resistance, it is way more than meets the eye. It, basically, when we're talking about price support resistance, we're talking about seven layers of price support resistance. And tomorrow, in tomorrow's trading session and training session, we are going to discover more and more elements about technical analysis and price support resistance. There are also precise trigger times in the market. In fact, in the morning, there are three trigger times. So you, you don't waste your time and money. And you have to tr trade with the market tempo. We're going to discuss about these timings also a little bit today and going into tomorrow's trading session. Also, specific price zones. There are four specific price zones within charts where the price is prone to rotate. It's prone to trigger. And it's also these key levels, these four specific price levels are self-fulfilling prophecies when trailing. If you don't have any other support zones or resistance zones, whether you're going long or whether you're going short, these become the best kept secret 
of institutional traders. This is something that institutional traders are using. Char synchronicity and divergency. Definitely, we're going to talk more about this topic tomorrow, but I just want to tap here very quickly on chart synchronicity and divergency because we have just ended a very boring trading session, right? Very boring trading session. If you had been into my trading room yesterday, I mentioned, I think probably 10 times, that if we finish the day with a doji on the daily chart, obviously, we will pretty much have a decision day going into today. So on focus was today's high and today's low. Now, there were some uh, triggers to the upside. NASDAQ had relative strength going into the day. And we actually have closed now at 415 with NASDAQ having relative strength compared to the market. NASDAQ is still into the green. Well, it's still only two, per, uh, two points up, 0.03%, but it's into the green. It's on the only index that has defended the green territory into the close. We had relative weakness that came into Russell today at the open. I mean, my goodness, we had a big spike up and then big spike down and then a big spike up again. And then we had a very, very hawkish morning. It was, uh, it, it definitely looked similar to an option expiration day. I mean, it was just wild. The price was incredibly wild this morning. It, it was trading in a, in a considerable wide range where setups were very hard to define at the beginning of the trading session. In fact, if I tell you today, I didn't take a trade. I did not take a trade. I didn't take a short and I didn't take a long. I also, I was the market observer today. I didn't want to become a liquidity provider for the market because today's market structure was strong. So higher time frames are dictating higher moves, although small and, and smaller time frames are dictating pullbacks. We've noticed on charts multiple setups on the 15 minute, on the five minute and the 15 minute charts that have failed reversal, have failed reversal. The only meaningful reversal, and we're gonna get, we're gonna go through charts in the last probably 20 minutes or so, and I'm gonna share all of this information with you on charts so it makes more sense. So the consolidation has started at 12:45. We were still bouncing back and forth uh, until 12 o'clock, and then at 12 o'clock we started to move lower and we stabilized, and we are coiling right now in all the indices on support zones. That's why all the indices right now are defending the support zones. I'm also going to give you some ideas about gold and about oil as we're going into uh, as we're going into the overnight trading session. All right, because futures trading is around the clock, 24 hours. All right, let's get started. Day one, this is what I prepared for you today. All right, day one, day trading essentials. What you need to get started in day trading. We have traders from all paths of life in here and from each and every single level. So I'm going to share with you some of the day trading essentials. Second of all, platform optimization for better trading performance. It is really important to have a really great layout when trading. Uh, if I tell you that I have the same trading layout than when I have started trading and I was fortunate enough to have a phenomenal mentor uh, and I have not tweaked one single element in my platform, I still have the same institutional grade layout in order to see everything on my charts. You saw a lot of traders that start toggling charts and doing this and doing that. Even in presentations, they're uh, grabbing charts, minimizing, maximizing. When you're trading, your 100% focus should be on trading, should not be on anything else. Uh, Dan G, uh, I, I did not have any trade that met, met my trading criteria. I'm going for high velocity moves 
and I'm going for really big moves. I'm not going for one to two ticks or three points or something, anything like that. So I'm looking for high velocity trades, really high odds trades that meet all my trading criteria. And uh, today's trading session did not fall in that. So therefore, I am not taking any trades. It's all about consistency in my case. All right, so why trade futures and why I made the full-time shift to trading futures? Like I said, I, uh, I, have, uh, I am a, a very, uh, um, I would not say aggressive, but uh, I have been trading futures for um, a very long time. And uh, I have switched to full-time day trading futures for the last six, seven years. Uh, I have been uh, trading day trading stocks my whole entire career, trading career. And uh, I find that, you know, as time progresses, you want to eliminate some of the noise and you really want to concentrate on an easier method, on an easier path for your trades. When I was day trading stocks, I used to, uh, I used to take anywhere between six and eight day trades a day. A day now I take from I take one to maximum two to three trades day trades per day when trading futures that's it I don't take a lot of trades but the trades that I take are really high odds they have to meet my a hundred percent trading criteria because trading is not about oh I'm gonna try this here there is no tr trial in trading you either go in or um, you know, you sit on the sidelines. You have to have 100% conviction on the move, 100% confidence in the move, and you have to have a trading plan and respect the trading plan. I have a trading plan that so far has increased my account progressively. And I did receive a question, and that's a very good question, thank you so much. Guys, feel free to post it in here. Uh, if you really have to, uh, you know, private message me, but I think everybody would benefit to see all the questions in here. Do you guys agree on that? Okay, do you mind if I read the question out loud? Okay, all right, thanks, Robert. Okay, so uh, I was asked right now, how do I manage my account? How do I, how do I grow my account? So, and what, if I take money out of my account? Okay, here's what I do. I do have a, a pretty considerable uh, uh, day trading uh, uh, size account for futures. And I could actually show you my account. I don't have any secrets. But anyways, what I do with my day trading account is at the end of each profitable month, I take my money out exactly what I have gained. So I usually, so my trading account is around 100K. I usually average out between 25 and 35 per month in my day trading account within a month. What I do with my trading account, so I leave my account at 100K, okay? So if you have, I don't know, a $20,000 trading account and if you make, I don't know, 2,000 in a month, I would take that money out. I would take my 2,000, it's your paycheck. Okay, it's your paycheck. Because day trading is an income producing source of income. Uh, 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 it's an income producing source, okay? It's not a wealth source. What I do in my swing trading account, that is where I pretty much grow the account. So I don't take money out of my swing trading account. I don't take money out of my investing account. I leave the money in and I work the money so it's compounding, right? But in my day, in my day trading account, I take my money out, okay? I take my money out every single time at the end of the month, and then I'm back to my original account size. So you have 20K, you make 2K in a month, you take your, your $2,000 out, and you leave your uh, 20,000 in your account, okay? Um, so if you don't have sufficient cash in your account, so if, you, here's the thing, as you're growing your account, I don't feel the need to grow my account more than that. To me, it is enough, okay? So to me, to trade with a $100,000 account is enough, okay? It's, it's truly enough. And I don't need to grow it to 150 to increase my size right now. So I'm very comfortable with my size. 
and trading, uh, uh, trading consistency. That's it for me. So I don't want to grow my, my account. My swing trade account, that's something different, right? So I'm leaving money in my swing trading account. I do, I do a lot of swing trading as well, and I leave my money in my swing trading account. But you have to make the difference, okay? T. Lee, I have three accounts. I have my day trading account. I have my swing trading account. I have my investing account. From my day trading account, I take my profits out and leave the original account size intact. In my swing trading account and investing account, I don't take a penny out, okay? What percentage of your account equity do you risk? I risk way less. And you would be surprised, Christopher. <laughs> uh, I don't take a lot of risk, and I, I really, um, so per trade, so I'm gonna give you an example, okay? I'm gonna give you an example. I don't risk more than $2,000 on each trade. On each trade. I don't risk more than $2,000 on each trade on an 100K account. I don't do that. But, but there are instances where I like to, uh, let's say for instance, um, and here's the thing, okay? You really, uh, disclaimer, you really have to know what you're doing, okay? Based on the support, yeah, exactly, 2%. Uh, so I don't risk more than that. Sometimes and most of the time in volatile, Christopher, in volatile market conditions, I trade half or maybe less than that. So, you know, a lot of traders would be surprised. Because when trading futures, a lot of traders use a lot of money. I know traders that have half of this account size and risk way more. Okay. So I, I'm on the conservative side. Because here's the thing. I like to, I, I like to uh, leave a little wiggle room in my trades. And if I see that there are clusters of support, I may not want to put a hard stop. And then uh, if the trade goes against me, and it is, if it's hitting a secondary support zone, let's say in an uptrend, or if I'm, if I'm long in a trade and a trade goes against me, okay, based on uh, some reversal zones that I'm watching, I may act to my trade and then place a, uh, place a hard stop below that uh, below that established support zone. So based on that reversal, okay, I may get my money back to the break to the break even level. So therefore, at break even, I take out what I have risk as a secondary trade. So what I consider this because I only take one to three trades a day. So let's say I take a first trade, okay, and if I decide on my first trade that I don't want to stop out based on the fact, but this is only based on the fact that I have a secondary strong support zone, I may let the price go against me, okay? But not by far, because remember, I need to have that cluster zone. And then at the sign of, at the first sign of reversal, off of the medium time frame, such as, I don't know, 15 minute, 30 minute, or an hour chart, uh, chart or time frame, uh, I like to add more to my trade, risking, let's say, maybe 1% or less than 1% to get my average down. And then I place a hard stop below that low, right? And then if, if and when my price is getting to the break-even territory, I like to take the profit on only the lot that I have added and then continue with the rest. I hope that makes sense. Anyways. All right, so today we're also gonna be talking about setups and orders, and I'm gonna share with you why I did not take any trades today. And yesterday we had two trades, okay? Yesterday we had two trades. We, we made money yesterday, and in fact we had, I forget, we had about seven points in S&P, and we made about 50 points into the Dow. So this, this is the kind of caliber of trades that I'm taking. So I'm not taking two points here or three points here or five points in NASDAQ. No, I'm looking for high velocity trades. So I'm really look, looking for really great setups. And if I don't have the setups, I don't trade. There's nobody forcing me, okay? I'm not on the time and I'm not getting paid. Listen, I'm not a broker, okay? A broker, you, if you guys are, you know, uh, I don't know, click happy, you're making your broker happy. 
I think my broker hates me because I don't trade a lot, <laughs> okay? All right, we're gonna talk about position sizing. Position sizing is something what makes or breaks your account. We're gonna talk about risk, uh, and we're going to dive in chart analysis. And tomorrow, we're gonna get into scanning and selecting the instrument to trade. Yeah, the, I mean, I'm watching four charts and still scanning selection here. Uh, also, we're going to be talking about day trading and swing trading time frames. And uh, depending on the time of the day, what time frame do you need to watch in order to have a better read on charts and be in sync and in flow with what the market is doing at that precise time? I'm going to do a little intro to micros and how you can use micros. I've traded micros. Oh my goodness, you're not going to believe how amazing micros are until you try them. I mean, believe me when I tell you this, I'm going to be using micros for higher time frames. And I think that micros are going to offer you a great opportunity to swing trade. Uh, I don't think that uh, micros are a great alternative to day trading if you have a good account size. If you're just starting trading, I urge you, instead of paper trading forever, use micros because you're going to have a different responsibility when trading. When you're paper trading, you're going to go like, oh yeah, I could take like, I don't know, a, a break here. I'm going to go for a walk. And then when I come back, I'm going to take a look at the charts. No, there's no such, when you're day trading, you have to be staring at the screen. If you're swing trading, that's different. That's hands off. You're unchaining yourself from the computer. And then you could go, go for a walk seven hours a day and then be in front of the computer only let's say 15 minutes at a time because you don't need to babysit you're way focused on higher time frames so it's different but when you're day trading you're a hundred percent focused here i don't get off the chair from nine o'clock until 11 30 or 12 o'clock i don't get up i do and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about daily routine as well today I don't get up because I'm 100% focused because that is my prime time when I have my opportunity and when I have my best chances to make the money in the morning. As, my, as the time goes by in the afternoon trading session, I like to focus on more unique plays. I like to see if the final hour into the trading session is strong or weak. So I like to see other types of setups that may be conducive for a strong reversal, like a short squeeze in the last 30 minutes or so. Okay. <laughs> you, you have to pull the refrigerator. Oh, you should see my desk, Peter. I have my, I have a cup of tea. I have a glass of water. <laughs> I have everything on my desk. I'm not kidding you. So when I come here in front of the computer, I'm like 100% ready to trade. So I've created this routine for me. So I have everything all set up here. But yeah, no bathroom breaks, no refrigerator breaks, no nothing. Like I'm not, I'm not kidding you. All right. So uh, also, tomorrow is a very important day for those of you that don't know how to scale in and out. Okay. Absolutely, I will show you, uh, uh, Dorothy, but please remind me because I have to share these multiple screens and remind me because I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you all the screens, okay? And, and in fact, today I'm going to be sharing you the screens in Day Trading Essentials, but if you guys want to see like a live shot, I took the pictures last night, but if you guys want to see a live shot, more than happy to. Okay, so... Um, if you guys don't know how to scale in or scale out of trades, this is gonna be a lesson, it's gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. It's not, so this is the exact lesson how to scale in and scale out of trades, okay? So if you're interested in that, that's tomorrow. And also the indicators that we use, we, as you can see, you know, you're gonna see my charts. I don't use a lot of indicators. Uh, I like to use a few moving averages and that's pretty much it. I don't use a lot of indicators and I often tell you guys the people that are, uh, the only people that are making money off indicators are the people that are actually creating the indicators. I mean, what? You can't re-support, you can't read resistance. You have to, you're a trader. 
it's 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 a uh, it's a no-brainer you have to learn how to do this and guys it's not rocket science you know what's hard implementing in live market uh, environment that's the hard part because whenever you look at the chart like oh let's see what happened in today's trading session oh wow today was a phenomenal day to go long or was a phenomenal day to go short well when you're at that very moment it doesn't seem so phenomenal does it okay all right and day three guys uh this comes by popular demand we had a hundred seats allocated last last week for the open house we had uh, 496 or 97 um, uh, traders that have joined us and we had to supplement seats. We usually don't like to do that because I like to have, you know, um, uh, my 100% focus definitely is on trading, but uh, I want to focus on you guys as well when we have the open houses because there are a lot of questions that you guys may have and I want to make sure that uh, you make, uh, uh, you know, like th this open house is really useful on your end as well. Not only that I share what I do on a, uh, you know, uh, not, not on t by minute, minute by minute case. And also to, uh, tomorrow we're going to go out and uh, review the uh, futures course demo. Okay, let's get started, guys. So first of all, trading guys is not a game. And trading is not a gamble. So take this very seriously. Trading is not an eight-hour job. And, it, and truly, if you want to become an excellent trader, you have to dedicate yourself to trading. Uh, yeah, I agree. Once you learn how to trade, you're going to try to simplify your life and you're going to try to simplify your uh, your day and your, obviously, if you opt into sw for swing trading down the line, you know, that's great. I consider swing trading as a retirement preoccupation, as a retirement hobby. And that's what I intend to do in a couple of years or so. But until then, I really like my income producing style where I can pull money out of the market uh, on a monthly order quarterly basis. So trading is not an eight hour job. And for you to reach that level in order to, you know, have more time for yourself, have more time for your family, half the time to do whatever you want. And not only that, but have the flexibility to travel. Uh, as, as uh, you know, crazy as, may, it's, uh, as crazy as it may sound, I travel a lot. Uh, we have a house in Michigan. We have a house in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm in Boca Raton right now. And we travel back and forth. I never discontinue the trading room. I never do that because I travel from office to office or even when I go on vacation, I travel with my computers and we only trade, let's say in the first two to three hours in the morning and then we're done for the rest of the day. So it is a lifestyle. Trading becomes a lifestyle. It is very important that if you embrace trading, you have to love what you're doing because if you hate what you're doing and if you're in this, you know, just to make money, I just want to make money. I just want to make money. I mean, let's face it. We all want to make money. This to me is a better way to make money. And it's also a recession proof job, right? It's a recession proof job. Coming from Detroit, I have experienced firsthand recession. It was a very sad time, 2008 and 2009, where one of, it was like one of every three neighbor's house was in foreclosure. They were working for GM. They were working for Chrysler. They were working for Ford. You know what happened with GM. They were kicking people out of their jobs left and right. It was a very sad thing to see. Okay. So remember, if you learn the skill, you can have, because trading can not only be a major source of income, but can also be a supplementary source of income. For those, many of you guys probably have full-time jobs. And oftentimes, you know, I get emails say, listen, I have a full-time job. I can't be in the market every single day. Is trading for me? Of course it is. You can swing trade. And now with the participation of micros, you have an excellent opportunity to swing trade at a low risk because you can decide your own risk depending on your account size. But now only bigger account sizes could participate in swing trading, right? I mean, let's face it. If you had a, uh, I don't know, if you had a 15 to 20 point stop in the S&P, 
that's substantial. That's a thousand dollars per contract. Okay, many accounts, small account sizes, would not be able to participate in such moves. So now you have the micros. Now you can have a I don't know a ten point stop and risk only fifty dollars per contract with the micros. So all, depending on your account size, and we're gonna talk about position sizing and all that good stuff in a second. So trading goes beyond sitting down at the market open and getting up at market close. It's beyond that. You have to do a lot of research before, and I'm gonna share with you some trading habits that you need to apply on a day-to-day -day basis. I have stuck with the trading habits because I wanted my trading to work, and it's working for me. Um, the real work is done when the market is closed or at the end of the week, okay? Or at the end of, if you're a swing trader, you do your work at the end of the week. Uh, I usually like to swing trade at the end of the week, and I pretty much set my swing trades in motion at the beginning of the week. That's it. That's all I do. It's not a lot of work, okay? Are commissions less with micros? Great question, Peter. Yes, they are way less. And we're going to talk about that as well tomorrow because it's not a big deal to make up for the commissions. For instance, uh, I use Thinkorswim, so I can tell you that the commission uh, for a round trip on Thinkorswim platform is about uh, $3, $3 uh, on the micros, round trip. Three. Now, it depends because if you open an account right now, you may have like $5 or even $4 or something like that. It's all, it truly really depends on your negotiator, right? The more you trade, the less commission you're going to pay. And I think this is valid with all, uh, with all the platforms. But uh, what I truly want to uh, mention now, and I will definitely repeat it tomorrow, is that um, you have to be mindful. Do not use micros if you're day trading and if you have, if you're trading the mini SM, uh, I'm sorry, if you're trading the Dow or the mini SMB, but if you're trading the Dow and you have a 20 point stop, obviously don't use micros. It doesn't make sense to take, I don't know, 25 contracts or whatever for the move, depending on your position size and use the full contract. You could use one or two contracts and done. And same with the mini SMP. If you have a three point or a, a, a three point stop or a two point stop you, uh, and risk per trade, you're not going to be using micros. So do not use them. I mean, I mean, don't take my word. This is what I'm applying for for my own accounts. Do not trade. Uh, do not trade. Um, I, I'm not trading. Let's say micros if I'm day trading, right? Uh, if you have a small account size, very, very small account size, like, I don't know, $2,000, $3,000, obviously, you're going to be using micros. But if you have a good, a decent account size, or even if you have a $5,000 account size, you can actually use for tight stops, you can use, still use the full contract. Okay, you can still use the full contract. Let's move on. The most important parts of trading that are really rarely discussed, okay? Uh, Christopher, I agree. Um, I agree, but I have been, here's the thing with using Thinkorswim. A lot of traders, uh, a lot of futures traders are navigating towards other brokers, which is fine. Uh, there are specific, specific brokers where you can only trade futures. I don't only trade futures. I trade a lot of stocks. I trade, uh, so beyond, uh, uh, beyond futures, I trade stocks. I sometimes do some options. Ooh, a thunderstorm here. Okay, <laughs> so, so sorry about that. We do have a generator, so in case, I hope the internet is gonna be fine. Okay, so um, for me, to me, commission is not the problem because I go for high velocity moves. I go for bigger moves, and that's why I wait so much, you know, for a setup to form before I take, uh, before I take a trade. But definitely, you know, this is something that is, you know, it's your own decision of where you want to, uh, where you want to have, you know, your money. There are a lot of things that I, and I'm not in any way affiliated with Thinkorswim. I have been trading with them like forever. I don't know, maybe 15 years or so. Um, and um, I like the fact that if I want to pull money out of the market, I have, you know, I have a Visa card for my trading account. And let's say I want to go and make a purchase. I don't know. I want to buy a couch or something or some furniture for my office. I, with today's profits or last week's profits, I just go and I just uh, swipe the card and I, and I use it. For me, it makes sense to use my Thinkorswim. Okay. 
All right, let's talk about things that are rarely discussed. What about confidence, guys? You need to have confidence, conviction, patience, mental toughness, and discipline. Why do you need to have all these? These are, uh, trading is basically 90% psychological, and that's why you need to have this. Today, I didn't have confidence in the market. So what? I didn't take a trade. I took two trades yesterday. So what? I didn't take a trade today. It's not about quantity. It's about quality of trading. Okay, you have to have confidence in your knowledge, a knowledgeable trader. Exactly, Dan, you cannot, I could not say it better. Discipline is the holy grail. If you're looking for the holy grail, guys, Dan has posted in here, discipline is the holy grail. There is no perfect system in existence. There's no perfect system. It's just about a high odds system. And that high odds system comes from confidence. Confidence comes from knowledge. If you have confidence in knowledge, you have conviction to execute the trade. But again, you have to have the patience and you have your patience is often tested. Remember, if you have, you know, if you're a clicker, click happy, okay, you're only making your broker happy. You're not making yourself happy because even if you're risking, and here's the mentality, a lot of traders are saying, okay, I'm only gonna going to risk. Uh, let's say two points here and I'm going to let the trade go. If it doesn't work, I'm only risking two points. But if you are doing this day in, day out, day in, day out, you're going to be incurring lots of commissions and that's going to kill your account. You don't want to do that. You want to trade less and go for bigger moves. This is the secret. Okay. When I was trading stocks, guys, I used to be a very active scalper not anymore not anymore now my zip code is off the five minute charts i'm looking for those high odds trades okay patience you have to have the patience to wait for the setup you don't have a setup so what you wait another hour you always have to trade and this is a, a great thing uh for trading you have to trade in sync with higher time frames all the time because think of this, higher time frames on charts, daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, are the ones that are propelling the price either higher or lower. When you're day trading, believe me when I'm telling you this, if you're trading in a daily continuation pattern, what does that mean? If the candlestick that has closed yesterday, okay, has a high, let's say, I don't know, of 26,200, just saying, in YM. And the low uh, has, uh, the low of the candle is, let's say, 26,100. So it has, it had a fluctuation, a price, a price gyration of 100 points throughout the trading session. If it trades above the prior candle high, it's going to issue a continuation pattern. And therefore, you're going to have price velocity to the next level. All right. Same thing. If it's trading below the low of the candle of the daily candle, right? What is going to happen? It's going to enter a pullback phase or depending on the trade, it's probably going to be good material to short, right? What if it's trading between yesterday's parameters, between yesterday's highs and low, highs and low, highs and low. Then you have a day like today. You have a total sideways day. You have a decision day, right? And especially if you end the day in a doji. Yesterday we had a doji, today we ended the day in a doji. Okay? So th these dojis, tell me one thing. These are two indecision days where the bears don't have the upper hand and neither do the bulls, right? So we're neutral. So we're neutral. So how can I be bullish or bearish when I don't have a continuation for higher, for a high, higher velocity in price or for lower? I'm sitting on my hands and this is what I did today, but we're going to get to that later. Mental toughness, mental toughness. This is so important for all of us. Now, it, when you, let me ask you guys a question. When you guys have a loss, how do you feel? How do you feel? Type it in here when you have a loss and I'm going to tell you how I feel, but don't lie. Do you love it? Do you like it? Type a one if uh, <laughs> miserable crappy exactly exactly mark <laughs> exactly exactly 
cost of doing business. Uh, no, no, it's emotional. It's emotional. <laughs> Pathetic. I hate it. I hate being stopped out. I hate being, and you know what I hate the most? When I'm stopped out and then the trade goes, uh, goes our way. Doesn't th isn't this annoying? Okay. All right. Not anymore. It's not. <laughs> okay. All right. I hate it when I get stopped out because I put so much, uh, I put so much effort I put so much effort in trying to define that trade and trying to, uh, you know, and try and day trading is the hardest day. If you learn how to day trade and then when you sit, switch to swing trading, oh my goodness. It's like, what if, what have I been doing my whole entire life? Okay. But Hey, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages to swing trading and day trading. But anyways, so yeah, you feel miserable when you stop out. It's, and because you feel uh, miserable, there are a lot of emotions that are going on with you, right? There are a lot of emotions. You're hesitant on taking the next trade because you go like, okay, so I just lost, I don't know, 2000 bucks. Oh my God. Or a hundred bucks or depending on your account size. It's like, okay, so this is not good. Especially if you come from a down, from, from, uh, from a losing streak, right? Am I right? You had two or three bad days and then you will start the day and you lose again. I am not immune to this and no trader is. If you hear a trader that does not have any stops or that, ha that is having like a phenomenal streak for like years, that trader is lying. Okay, I use limit stops. I use trailing, I, I, use, I, use, uh, I use limit stops. And I trail, I trail my trades uh, as I'm going into um, positive territory. I lift my stop. I lift my stop. Uh, you guys are going to experience if you come to the open house and if we're going to have any trades there, I'm glad the open house was not today with live trading because we wouldn't have a trade. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, that, today was not a great, tip, uh, great uh, day, but I could give you an idea. If you go to my website, tradeall.com, if you click on trading room tab, at the very bottom, I have posted uh, our trading, uh, our live trading from last Thursday, and we got in some trades, and uh, I, have tr uh, I have trailed the trades live, so you can have a better idea how I did it. And we're gonna do it live on Thursday. So it's a mental game, okay? It's all about odds in your favor. And the best thing to do is to, uh, is to enforce positivity into your trading. Motivation, motivate yourself saying, I'm better than this, right? I can do this, I'm doing this. And not only that, but um, think of trading as, uh, um, you know, as a game, uh, the, the one thing that my mentor taught me is that, and that was when I was aggressively, uh, day trading stocks was that what you have to do is, um, uh, you, wh what you have to do is you have to allocate a certain amount per uh, risk per week. Okay. You allocate a certain amount of, oh, sure. Angela. Uh, per week. Okay. So let's say you have, I don't know, you define your amount, divide that amount into five days, but what right? Five trading days, Monday through Friday and allocate a certain amount, a certain trading amount per day. Now that amount per day, divide that by the number of trades that you want to take within that specific day. Okay whether you want to take two trades or you want to take four trades. I typically like to allocate three bullets to my trading. So I like to take three trades. Why do I do that? And we're going to talk a little bit about this tomorrow. Why do I do that? Because I'm giving myself a chance to dig myself out of the hole. Okay. I'm giving myself a chance to dig myself out of the hole on Thursday. When we had the open house, my first trade was, um, uh, was a loss. So you can imagine, it's like, oh, 
this is not good. <laughs> All lost on an open house. Oh, this is not good. It's like, ah, okay. But I fought back. Not only that I made my money back, but I made considerable profit by the end of the trading session. Big, big, huge, huge profit. Not only that I had to dig myself out of the hole. So leave yourself. I have a very strict trading plan, Angela. Super strict trading plan. Super, super strict trading plan. And my trading plan told me not to trade today. Okay. And I have very precise rules and very precise setups that I apply on a day to day basis. If they don't pan out, if they don't play out, I'm not trading. Okay. So you have to have the mental toughness. So, what I meant, so I'm going to wrap up with this. So, divide that by three bullets. So, I don't know if you're using six, let's say if you, I don't know, $600 or $1,000 per day, right? Divide it by three. And you can use, $300 risk per each trade, okay, $300. But here's the thing, if by the end of the session, you have lost your whole entire three bullets, that's everything that you are going to lose, that's it. You're not gonna lose, you're not gonna tap into tomorrow's trading. And you're not gonna tap, you're not gonna let your trading go bad, and in one day you're gonna take six trades, and the next day you're gonna take only one, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yes, that's, a, that's a great question. And I'm also going to have a, a, a webinar, uh, on stop losses. I think that webinar is going to come in, I don't know, maybe, um, July. How do you, it's called intelligent stops. Okay. Where I talk about hard stops and soft stops, which are mental stops. But I always use a stop level because you, if you don't have a stop level, you have no idea how to position size and you don't know how much quantity of that specific, how many contracts to get in the trade with. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Trading essentials. Basically, guys, is that if you're a full-time trader, you need a very fast computer. Okay, so if you invest in education, if you have the money to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, open a brokerage account, make sure that before you do, uh, before you open a brokerage account, you need a very fast computer. Why do you need a very fast computer? Well, because a very fast computer will enable you to have really good, fast execution. There are many companies out there. Uh, that are providing, uh, that are providing, um, uh, you know, very good computers. Uh, you can build yourself an excellent computer um, and uh, uh, make sure that, you know, uh, make sure that you have a very, very fast computer. Why do you need that? Well, because you need to execute fast. You don't need any, you don't need any lag. Why? Because price right now, and as, you've, as you have noticed, Price has become super hawkish since last year, since uh, all this volatility has started and everything is a whip. You want to make sure that you have a fast computer that uh, keeps up with the, uh, with the volatility and not only that, but with the algos. I mean, guys, algo, uh, uh, high frequency, these high frequency trading computers are very, very powerful. Okay, so you have to uh, you have to make sure that you have a really good computer that uh, that uh, is uh, definitely keeping up uh, with price. There are computers that are not keeping up with price, and at times the platform is not keeping up with price. Yeah, that's right. It's the, uh, sometimes the platform, and even Think or Swim had some issues, and some other platforms have had some price issues uh, with keeping up with price last year. It was a very volatile year, especially in February, March, and then it, uh, then again in October, November, and December. So that's one of the reasons why you need a fast computer. Now, if you're a day trader, if you are a day trader, this applies for day trading alone, you need to have at least three monitors, even if you're just starting to trade right now. Guys, if you wanna make trading your business, you want to make sure that you have all the conditions to start your business. And it's actually a low cost investment to start a, uh, to start a trading business, right? So that's why a lot of traders come into, uh, into day trading, but they don't know that you need to have education, fast computer, you need to have a very good layout, 
and a good internet connection, okay? And they cheap, they cheap out on one of the other, and that's why they go like, oh, it doesn't work for me. After they lost a lot of money, they might as well go, might as well went on vacation with that money. So take this very seriously. You need to have three monitors, and I'm gonna share with you why you need to have uh, three monitors a little bit later on. Okay, so even if you have a laptop and have two little monitors on the side, that's perfect. Okay, start small. Listen, you could use refurbished, you could use whatever, you know, just make sure that you have the real estate space so, you, so your eyes are going to navigate uh, and read the charts correctly. The other thing is that you need to have a very fast internet. Uh, because oftentimes with slow internet, and I have experienced experienced this when traveling, uh, when you put an order in, okay, when you put an order in, it just stays there, it stays there, it stays there, and then you see the price go up, and then you get filled after like I don't know, thirty seconds, forty seconds after the price has already triggered, right? So you need a very fast internet, and it is very important for you to have hard wire into your computer or laptop, your desktop or your laptop, hard wire, don't go on wireless, okay? Um, the other thing is that I use a wired, I use a wired keyboard. The only thing that I use, that I have wireless is the mouse, okay? The only wireless thing is the mouse. And listen, it's not recommended, but I often, <laughs> I change the batteries very, very often, okay? Um, and then, of course, you need an online broker, right? So with the online broker, you have a huge selection criteria. Like I said, I'm not affiliated in any way with TD Ameritrade. I do a lot of stock trading. I sometimes do some day trades in stocks as well. Uh, I swing trade uh, stocks. Sometimes I take some options. I use TD Ameritrade. Okay. Uh, there are other brokers out there, interactive brokers, Trade Station, Charles Schwab, etc. You have to... Uh, yeah, that's true, Peter. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, Ronald, so you're experiencing delays, right? Okay, all right, so uh, all in all is that you need, uh, you need your broker. The other thing is that you have to master the platform, okay? You have to master the platform as well, so make sure that you uh, practice in your new brokerage account for at least two weeks before you go live. All right, there are some traders that don't have the funding for uh, to open a brokerage account. That's fine. There are a lot of proprietary trading companies out there, and there are very some very good ones, and amongst which, you know, there is one. I'm not going to give any names, uh, but if you want, I, I can provide you with details. Just shoot me an email. And last year in December, I opened one for my nephew. If it wasn't reliable, I wouldn't do anything like that, right? So it's very reliable. He's trading on and off off of that platform. He's not trading full time, but anyways, he's very young. And uh, I wanted to get him into trading and I wanted to get him into live trading, okay, without putting the funds right up. So if you don't have the necessary funds and if you think you can trade, you can prove it and then you can get a funded account. Um, so basically, you need, you also need the most important part, and that is the trading education, a mentor and ongoing support for your education. This is my layout, guys. This is where I'm at right now. I'm sitting on this desk. That's my wireless mouse right there that you see. This is my keyboard. That's the microphone that I'm using, and this is my chart display, okay? This is my chart display. So as you can see right here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, this is my active trader, Dorothy, Okay, this is my active trader right here, and this is where I execute the trades. This is my dome. I put in limit orders on all of my uh, on all of my trades. So basically, if I'm bullish, I navigate into the dome right into this area and place a limit buy, and I place my stop right here. Right. So when my when after my obviously after my trade is triggered i let it uh, i let it trigger and then i place my hard stop right here and i also trail etc sarah what i do is i lift i lift my stop up okay i lift my stop up all right this 
screen right here is on my uh, is on uh, on my um, left hand side. You can see that there are six charts right here. This is my watch list. This is my watch list, and I have uh, I have the M and &E Dow, the S and P. I also have um, uh, I have Nasdaq here. I have Russell here. I have oil, and I have gold right here. Let me let me get it right here. Let me know if you guys can see the screen right now. Can you guys see the screen? Okay, perfect. So you can see it. This is my my left hand side screen with my with my watch list. We're going to talk about this later and into tomorrow's trading session as well. Now look at the screen right here. So when I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here, right in the center. Okay, this is my center. Okay, this is where my chair is. Okay, and this is this is the center. This is where I sit, and this is where I focus on my trading to execute trades. Right. I watch, uh, I, I, look at my, I look at my list to see what has relative strength, what has relative weakness, et cetera, et cetera. And then I, I look at this screen. This is my main screen. I have eight time frames here that I follow. I have the one minute, I have the two minute, I have the five minute, I have the a 15 minute, I have the one hour, I have the daily, I have the weekly, and I have the monthly charts right here i'm looking for permanent harmony and synchronicity throughout all this time frame before executing trades because i'm a day trader in some instances i use the tick chart so we're going to talk more about time frames tomorrow but i just want to tap on uh on time frames a little bit today i use the i use the tick chart i use the 512 tick i also use the one and the two minute chart and these are my zip codes when I initiate trades in the first 30 to 45 minutes in the trading day. These are my go-to. And I want to watch this, uh, the synchronicity throughout all these time frames right here. When I'm getting a one-minute buy, I want to make sure that I want to see a two-minute buy, and I want to make sure that I see a five-minute buy. So I want the perfect synchronicity throughout time frames. The other chart that you see here, and I actually have two more, um, uh, uh, two more, uh, two more, not screens, two more um, windows here. So this screen right here, I'm gonna show you, let me just navigate here, because this picture, uh, this I had an overlap of pictures, so I'm gonna drag it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna just, just gonna drag this one right here. So I hope that you guys can see, can you guys see the screen? Just type a yes. Can you guys see the screen? Okay, you guys see the screen? Okay, perfect. All right, now these are my Dow components and I keep an eye on my Dow components. Why do I keep an eye on my Dow components? Because here's the thing, if I'm trading, I dragged another screen uh, over this screen, okay? If I'm trading the Dow right here and if Dow has relative strength, it is because one of these stocks that you see here on my panel, one or more or the majority are trading into the green or our triggering buy setups, daily buy setups, or weekly buy setups that are, the, that are running higher. So if I have relative strength throughout this panel of stocks, and that's something because, and here's the thing, it's not mandatory to watch stocks, but I am coming from a stock trading background, and I love to use this because it gives you a special edge, an extra edge in the market. And I have the same thing uh, on this screen right here. Okay, so I have a separate screen right here, and this is with NASDAQ. But what you see here on the screen is trade ideas, and this is a scanner that I have, uh, that I'm using right now on a little laptop, okay? So I'm using this scanner on a little laptop, and I use the scanner because it uh, gives me the breath, the market breath, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, it gives me, you know, momentum if the stocks are running into the green or if the stocks are running into the red. Plus, it gives me like setups and all that stuff. Um... John, what do you mean if I, can I share the layout? You be, are you using Thinkorswim? John, are you using Thinkorswim? Shoot me an email. Okay, shoot me an email. All right? Okay. And, um, all right, so this, this is basically, this is basically designed for five, uh, for five, uh, for five windows, uh, for five, gosh. It's getting late, right? <laughs> For five screens, and I have now I have this on another screen. All right, so here it is. I promised you guys that I'm going to share my screen. 
Okay, I'm gonna do it live. This is my screen right now. Okay, this is my screen. All right, and this is my main screen. This is where I place all my trades. Okay, this is where I place all my trades. Okay, and uh, this is where, for instance, if I'm watching the mini SMP, okay, just, just to give you an idea. All right, so I'm watching it here, let's say on the one hour. I have a very, because I love swing trading, and when I started trading, I, was, I actually started tra trading with swing trading, and then I navigated to day trading, and then I, you know, I'm doing a combination of both, okay? I love to put a special focus on my hourly charts, okay? Special focus on my hourly charts. So therefore, what I do is I like to look for a one-hour reversal, so pullback, buy, uh, reversals in, uh, in these, um, in these indices. Okay. So this is the main screen. So I have here the one minute, the two minute, the five, the 15 minute. I also have the one hour that is here, the daily, you can see that I'm using fibs. I'm using, I'm not using sophisticated indicators. I don't have an indicator that tells me, Oh, high time to buy, you know, or it's time to sell. I don't believe that there is such a system in existence. Okay. All right, this is the active trader um, where I ex actually execute this, uh, execute the trade. Like I said before, um, I do Ronald, I do use pivot points. These horizontal lines right here, they're daily pivot points. Okay, so this is where I place my trades. If I'm long, I click here. If I'm short, I click on the other side, and that's pretty much it. And this is front and center. So this is when I'm talking to you guys right now, this is my main computer, so it's overlapping this, uh, this screen, okay? So um, this is in front of you because it's your execution screen, and now you have to look, okay, how's the price action? Like I said, this, this is from, uh, from the day before yesterday. It's from the night. So we gapped up, right? We gapped up. And then we were, uh, we were meandering, we were meandering right into, and we held this area, and then we rotated back up, right? So you want to make sure that you have the screen and the chart uh, in front of you, okay? You want to make sure that you have the screen and uh, the dome right in front of you, right? So you see the setups. All right. The other thing is uh, the watch list that I showed you before, and this is comprised in the four indices. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about how do I decide at the beginning of the trading session which index to trade? Okay, am I gonna trade S&P today? Am I gonna trade NASDAQ today? And tomorrow we're gonna be talking about that. I also have gold and oil here. All right, and again, um, if you guys are into other commodity trades, obviously you can have a screen for that, okay? And you can watch bonds, you can watch um, um, copper, you can watch natural gas, soybeans, corn, whatever it is that interests you right so i have another screen but it's not on my display right because my focus in the morning is only on the indices trust me you can't trade a, a um, corn and soybeans and natural gas and uh, copper and put a trade in the indices and put a trade in gold you can't do that if you really want to uh, uh you know actively trade you could do you could do two trades let's say at the same time but three's a crowd Okay, three is the crowd. You're gonna lose. How do you how do you trail? You have to actively trail because sometimes you're you know you're going into scalps or more aggressive scalps or etc. So you want to make sure that uh, you know you can manage what you get in. I would love to get in all the trades, right? Because today I saw that weed had a really great day, so I was watching it on a side. So what? Let it go. Okay, I was focused on uh, I was focused on the indices. All right, this is the the screen that I just pulled here. Uh, no, I have, no, I just have alert, um, um, my alerts go exactly on, uh, on the chart. And when the price is reaching the alert level, it just uh, notifies me uh, on my phone. And, and obviously it has a sound alert as well on the platform. Uh, but no, you, you just put it, uh, you just put the alert on one chart and it automatically populates on the other, on the other screens as well, if you want. <clears throat> I don't do options for futures. I don't do options for futures. And in fact, when I trade options, uh, I, I really like to trade um, the stock more than options. And I highly recommend, and it was, this was recommended to me when I first started trading, if you have uh, a good, decent account size, 
opt for the stock and not for the option. But it's it's a personal preference. Uh, I like to trade the stocks. I do options only on high priced uh, high priced stocks such as Google or Amazon or I don't know something something that is very pricey. Okay, I don't let's say I don't do options on Bank of, Bank of America. Okay because I could buy the stock. And uh, uh, honestly, you're, you're going to do way better if you're trading the stock than if you're trading futures. All right. Daily routine. Um, I, I do. I, I do. I do sector analysis, market analysis, you name it. I do it. That's, that's my weekend all panned out. Okay. All right. Morning session. What do you do in the morning? You got to have a routine. So first thing that I do is I start my platform and I check for updates because sometimes you get updates and especially this happens through the weekend, think or swim updates the platform, um, um, uh, not every weekend, but oftentimes in the weekend. And I like to have everything, uh, everything uh, up to date. Uh, and I want to make sure that, you know, if I don't pop open my platform at nine o'clock in the morning and then it takes five minutes to, you know, to update, uh, to update until I see a chart. So make sure you turn your computer on, put your platform on, make sure there are not any updates, et cetera. So, or check for updates. The other thing is that I don't even look at charts. The first thing that I look at is, okay, what's the news for the day? What are the economic releases for today? Today we obviously today we didn't have a lot of economic releases and it was expected to have this uh, chaotic price action. But as we're navigating into the rest of the week, we're going to have some numbers. And also next week, guys, next week, we're going to have FOMC. Big mover. <laughs> Big mover. <laughs> okay. Are we going to get, uh, okay, what's going to happen with the rates, right? All right. So the other thing uh, that after you're, uh, you know, done with the news, write down on a piece of paper. If you're just starting out, put some post-its there with the major economic releases for the day or better yet, everybody has a smartphone now. Make sure you place your, um, this is something that I used to do uh, a long time ago. I would set the alert, but now you can add it to your, uh, to your calendar uh, add the economic, the major economic releases to your calendar. You could do this through the weekend or you could do this in the morning. So you're notified, you get that notification on your screen. So you, uh, you know, 15 minutes before 10 o'clock that you are going to get, I don't know, some numbers at 10 o'clock. I don't know. Maybe you get consumer confidence or what have you, you get an economic release at 10 o'clock. So this way it's going to prevent you from taking a trade ahead of a, uh, ahead of the, uh, ahead of an announcement. So you are not going to be stuck in a trade and say, oh, darn, I forgot about this and I got the trade long and the numbers were bad and it took the price lower. Okay. So you have no excuse. Now you can uh, schedule your, uh, your news. Um, then you do your market bias. Then you look at your chart to you determine your bias, depending on your key levels in the market. Then after your market bias, you develop a game plan. You set alerts. You actually saw some alerts on my screen. We're going to get to charts and, uh, in a few seconds here. So make sure that you have a really good laid out game plan for long, for short, for a sideways market, for whatever it may be, mark down your key support zones, your key release areas, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Dorothy, what is the base, uh, best source for getting economic releases? I use forexfactory.com, okay, uh, slash calendar, so Forex Factory. I've uh, been using it forever. Uh, Forex Factory is a great source, and actually, uh, when the news comes out, uh, or, or yeah, exactly, uh, thanks, thanks, T. Lee. Um, do you pre-plan? Oh, yes, Ronald, I do. I do. I do pre-plan for the announcements. I do pre-plan for the announcements. I usually don't trade news. Uh, or if I'm in a trade and there's a news announcement, I place a hard stop and I typically choke the trade. But choking the trade means I'm giving it very little room for the downside because if I'm in the money and uh, if uh, I want to, uh, you know, and if I see that there is an announcement, I, I, I'm not a gambler at all. I'm a very conservative trader, probably one of the most conservative traders you're ever going to meet. Okay. So uh, for the PM session, right? I don't trade between 12 o'clock and two o'clock. I don't. I just go outside, go for a walk, 
um, you know, refresh my brain, reset, and then come back for the PM session at 2 o'clock. I sometimes watch the market from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock and eat a lunch on my desk. But I don't really advise that you do that. Just have an organized, balanced life. Start at 9 o'clock and then take a break from 12 to 2 and then come back in the market at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, I uh, determine again my market bias and I determine again the uh, game plan for the afternoon trading session and I decide whether to trade or not. If we are in an ongoing trend, I'm going to be looking for trades that, uh, that uh, have optimum uh, odds for continuation either to the upside or to the downside. Um, and uh, at the end, I do the daily review. So after everything is all said and done, after I close the trading room, it's time for me from, uh, from about 4.15 to about uh, 5 o'clock. And that's what I do every single day, no exception. Uh, well, today is an exception. I'm going to do it a little bit later. But I review the, uh, I review the market. Anything that I have missed, anything that I could have done uh, and I could do better uh, moving forward. I analyze the trades that I have executed. Uh, I look at the chart and measure exactly what I did. And I also measure what I could have done or could have improved uh, um, by uh, doing into my, into my trade. So I review, I review, I do a very, very thorough re review of my, of my trading. Okay, uh, futures and account sizes. Now, um, I've received a lot of emails in regards to the micros account, and I think that uh, most of the brokers still require uh, you to open an account with uh, uh, at least $5,000. I think that there are very few brokers out there that are requiring $3,000. I know a trader that, um, was mentioning something here in the U.S. that they have a lower um, uh, lower requirement to open an account. Uh, if you and I think that and here's the thing, guys, uh, with futures trading, um, a lot of traders st uh, start uh, their trading careers with stock trading because it's so familiar. You know, you hear it all over the news. You hear it on CNBC before. Uh, all this uh, volatility and like five or 10 years before, if you would turn on to CNBC, you would only hear fundamental stocks, et cetera, et cetera. Very few elements about futures trading. Very, very few elements about futures trading. Futures trading have um, gained popular popularity about five years ago when uh, more uh, traders uh, at Morgan Stanley and Chase were allocated to the futures desks. And uh, now they have more futures traders than they have stock traders because they have automated so much of their uh, of their stock trading. So uh, they started allocating more traders uh, traders to the futures desks. Oh, there you go, uh, Gary. I, I couldn't remember future uh, infinity. Uh, uh, yeah, infinity has a three minimum three thousand dollars minimum requirements to open a futures account. So if you want to start day trading, uh, day trading the stock market, you are obviously required to have $25,000, right? So uh, you, a lot of traders, what they do is they start trading the stock market, they lose so much money, uh, and after they lose you know, a bunch of money, more than 20,000, they go like, okay, what else can I trade now? Because they still, they still want to trade, right? They're not educated, but they still want to trade. So um, they go either the uh, they they go either on the options trading route or the futures trading route, which is sad because futures trading is so much better than than stock trading. And I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but yes, it is because of the simplicity. Okay, when you're trading stocks, day trading stock. Let's say you want to day trade Apple or you want to day trade Bank of America or Cisco. What do you do? You have to keep a tab on what the uh, what the general market is doing. We have to keep a tab on uh, what the queues are doing, what the spies are doing, what the diamonds are doing, right? And this is how I started trading uh, trading futures because I was watching the queues, I was watching the spies, I was watching the diamonds, and then I was scrambling all the scanners, you know, trying to find a stock, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I could just trade the indices, right? Okay, so yeah, this is how I came into this. Um, okay, so the thing is that one of the reasons many traders gravitate towards um, trading futures is the relatively low startup cost. And uh, for example, it only requires you um, 
Uh, it usually requires about $30,000 to open a stock day trading account. And the thing is that you have to maintain at least 25K in order to keep your day trading status. You lose a penny, you're done. Uh, all you can do in that account is swing trade. So the futures market allows you to open an account for as little as $5,000. And best of all, you do not have to maintain that amount because as long as you have sufficient cash in your account to cover the margin requirements to trade the index or commodity, you can actually have a balance of seven to $800 and still be able to trade futures now, right? Of course you get bigger uh, leverage, right? So why do I like futures trading and why is futures trading so, uh, so appealing? Uh, well, compared to stocks, obviously it's the account size. You also have greater leverage like Gary mentioned. Uh, you have smaller position moves where you make uh, more money than you would trade the stock market. Um, you have more focus because you're only focused on four indices and this is, but of course the plethora and it depends on personal preference. Some traders may want to trade only crude. Some people may want to trade only gold. And by the way, gold, you could trade crude and gold with minis and micros and et cetera, whatever you want. So not only indices are right now. And this was a thing that not a lot of traders knew. Did you guys know that you could trade mini gold and you could trade, you could trade micro gold? I've, I've traded micro gold with really great results. And trust me, I have a really good size trading account, but I've traded it with micros because I wanted to use a quarter of the, a quarter of the position. And I wanted, I wanted to give it just a really wide stop for, uh, for, um, uh, for a core trade, for a position trade. You can take on a short position with these. You, uh, you have central clearing, reliable volume data, no earnings. So you don't have to pay attention. It's like, Oh my God, I forgot I'm in Cisco and I'm long and uh, the, uh, there are earnings tomorrow morning and I can't get out. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, earnings, in fact, are the fuel, the engine that power our indices. And when Google and Apple are reporting earnings and if they should coincide to report earnings the same day, that's a powerhouse. So what, what it means is that that's going to propel, if they have good earnings, it's going to propel NASDAQ higher. So therefore, you can trade, you can trade the index, uh, you could tr actually trade, uh, uh, trade Apple earnings and trade um, uh, let's say Google earnings via, uh, via NASDAQ. A lot of traders don't know that, but you could do that. Uh, you're not required to have a scanner, no special indicators, no uptick rules and nothing of that sort. So it's very, very simple. It's, it's trading simplified, if you will. So futures market is open 24 hours a day. If you have a full-time job, then guess what? You can still trade because you can swing trade. And now with the micros, you can position size. And you can trade, let's say, I don't know, let's say you, uh, you have a small, let's say you have a $3,000 account size, right? And with that account size, let's say you want to swing trade. And because you're swing trading, you can use a little bit elevator risk, right? And let's say you want to trade the M&E S&P. And M&E S&P is setting up a wide swing stop. Let's say it's making a daily buy setup and it's having a 15 point, uh, 15 point stop. If you're, if you have, a, 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 if you're using a full contract, right? So before June 6th, when these micros were initiated, if you have a small, if you had a smaller account size, you could not really participate in this move. Well, not with a calculator risk, right? But now if, if you have, let's say a $3,000 account, and if you're only taking two trades per week, right? Because you're swing trading, you're not aggressively tra trading every day, you can risk $200. And if you have a $15, a 15 point stop in the mini S&P, you can, you can trade the micro and you could get a uh, three contract and that would be a $200 risk. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I love the versatility and the fact that you can actually have benefit from these ongoing swings and we will continue to benefit moving forward throughout this year using these micros. I like to day trade and swing trade at the same time. And in fact, we do, um, we, we actually, uh, we actually, uh, and I actually look at charts between 9.30 and 10 o'clock at night to see if I have something that is setting up for the overnight trading session so I can, so I can take those specific trades, okay, with minimum risk. I do, Ronald. I do. If there's a trade that is setting up, in fact, I did alert my traders that tonight I have a watch in gold 
And if uh, gold is going to uh, trade over 13, 1335 tonight, I will issue a signal for a buy in gold. Okay, so yeah, I do. Um, I do trade in extended hours. And I think that's the whole thing about, uh, you know, this 24 hour market is that you can take advantage of it, right? Um, but Ronald, you have to be very mindful of all the economic releases that are issued in the overnight trading session. And because you are trading, uh, because you are taking swing trades, you have to take them on a higher time frame. Taking the trades on a higher time frame offer you the possibility to have a wide stop and not be fleeced out of trades when a news announcement is coming out from UK or Europe or et cetera. Uh, at three o'clock, four o'clock, or five o'clock in the morning. Okay, my sweet spot is between nine thirty and uh, and uh, eleven thirty a.m. Eastern, and that is because that is the overlap of the London session with a New York trading session. At eleven thirty a.m. Eastern, the London session closes. Uh, and actually the European session closes an hour earlier and then at 1030 and then we have the Euro, uh, the, the London session that is opening uh, is closing at 1030. So you have this really nice dynamic that is happening in the sweet spot and that's why I love it. Uh, and I know that um, uh, Dan G you mentioned tax advantages. Hello. I mean, of course, as an income producing source, uh, I love to have tax advantages. You have lower effective income tax rates. You have simplified reporting at the end of the year. You, you are going to download your 1099B form and give it to your accountant or file the taxes yourself. You have the 60-40 rule if you are a U.S. citizen uh, or resident. Uh, and for full-time traders like myself, you have additional tax benefits with tax trader status from the IRS. You want to buy a desk, you want to buy, all your training expenses are deducted, okay? Uh, your losses, et cetera. Uh, Dorothy, I'm not really sure. Talk to your broker. I think you can. You can, okay? I think you can. All right, and then of course you maximize your capital efficiency. Right now, I'm gonna go through very quickly uh, through this slide. Basically, this uh, it, this is an example, like if you have an account of $200,000 and if you wanna trade the mini SMP, right? If you wanna trade the spiders, if you wanna trade the SPX, right? You have you basically have three options. You either buy $200,000 $200, worth of the stock, right, of spies, or if you have a leveraged account, you can use your leverage if you have a swing trading account it's two to one if you have a day trading uh, account a sport four to one etc so you could either use a um, hundred thousand dollar of your account or you can use less than that uh, you could also buy futures on margin and this is my personal favorite because this refers to uh this refers to futures you can buy futures on margin taking advantage of the approximate 10 to 1 leverage available for the e mini s p 500 uh, uh, contracts, right? And this will allow you to control the same size portfolio with stock by leveraging $20,000 of your available cash. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about setups and orders. Now we made one thing clear and I showed you on my active trader that I put limit orders because I know in advance where I want to purchase when I want to, when I want to uh, in, uh, to go long, or I know the precise area if I want to short. And because I know these two elements, this allows me to use uh, limit buy and stop orders on my dome, right? Uh, very, in very rare occasions, do I use buy at market or sell at market, okay? If the market is very aggressive, um, uh, I'm not really sure, Dorothy, you have to talk to your broker because it differs from broker to broker. So, um, oh, oh yeah, for day, for day trading, futures, yeah, talk to your broker. Yeah, talk to your broker. You're going to have to go through a whole process, and I know it, it's a little bit tedious process uh, uh, before approval with Thinkorswim. They have, like, extra precautionary measures. So, anyways, so... Uh, there are two major setups that I use uh, as a day trader and swing trader. In my class, I teach 10 strategies, okay? But it, in reality, those are really, uh, let's say, unique strategies where you can pull extra money out of the market where 
Um, in reality, there are basically two strategies that you're going to use most often. These two strategies are pullback buys or pullback sells and ongoing trends. So I only go long in a, um, um, in, a, in a very strong market environment and I short in a weak market environment. I didn't do anything today because today is a sideways day, okay? Uh, I also love and I am the breakout and the breakout queen of setups because this is my absolute favorite, favorite setup to trade, either breakouts or breakdowns. I love to trade them and I'm really good at them. So uh, whether it's a stock or an index or whether it's gold or oil or whatever it is, and right now gold is into that kind of breakout pattern. Okay, so because we know in advance, like I said, where these areas, the buy areas or the short areas are, I use limit order. So what I do is I do my analysis in the morning and then I wait for the setup and then I mention, I say, okay, so I'm going to be looking for this pullback buy. This is the trigger. This is the stop. And I see here is the target one, target two, target three or et cetera. And the entry is, I don't know, I'm just going to give an example, uh, 2894 uh, for the entry in the MNE S&P and my stop is 28, uh, 2878 and my target is going to be 2904. This is how I communicate in the trading room as well. Um, and, uh, when the, uh, uh, when the price is super fast and, uh, actually when it's really moving, uh, rapidly between nine 30 and uh, around uh, nine 30 to 10 o'clock is super fast. And then it usually maintains the same strength. If it's going parabolic up of, or parabolic down, uh, it's going to, um, act very hawkish. Uh, then at times I may be using a market order, but very, very seldom times. Okay. Um, uh, Jack, here's a strategy for you. This is a pullback buy. Okay. Jack, if you're looking right now at the chart, this is a pullback buy. Uh, this is a chart of crude and here we had a rally and this is a pullback. We're not here to teach strategies by the way today. Uh, but I just want to show you how I place my buy order. This is a pullback into a confluence zone. We teach this in class. And once we have the reversal off of this, uh, off of this zone, we place our entry and we place our stop and we let it, uh, let it run to targets. Okay, so this is an example of a pullback buy strategy off a of confluence zone. All right, this is a breakout strategy. These are just two examples. I'm not teaching any strategies, Jack. You wanna join my, uh, my class, we teach a futures class and we teach you 10 strategies to act on the market. Okay, this is a breakout. You can see it right here. And by the way, these were the job numbers. Look at the job numbers created hawkish, uh, a very hawkish price action on Friday. This was the breakout area right here over the resistance high. You can see the low right here and the price follow through higher. That's why breakouts are extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. And remember one thing, guys, if there's anything that you want to take away from today, remember this, news is just a brief interruption within a trend. Okay, position sizing. Position sizing will determine how many contracts you're going to take the trade with according to your account size and daily loss limit. We talked about the daily loss limit that you will, you allocate for, uh, for each day and that daily limit you divide into three. Okay. Uh, position sizing should be determined by one, your account size. Number two, risk tolerance. That is your personal risk tolerance because you could have a very big account size but you cannot have a tolerance on your loss because everybody's different right you could have i don't know three hundred thousand dollar account and then if you cannot take a five thousand dollar loss on your account then you have to go down in your account size you have to be very comfortable in your trades and this is what these micros are doing because and here's an example right here if you're, if you have that hot potato feeling in your hand, and if you're sweating and if you're like, oh my God, oh my God, is this trade going to work for me? Trust me. What you need to do is go down in size. When you go down in size, you're going to sleep better at night. If you're in a swing trade, you're going to manage it way better, uh, way better when you're, uh, when you're in a day trade as well. 
Okay. So in either case, you're going to, you're going to, the outcome is going to be way better when you are not that emotionally attached to that loss amount. When I started trading, my mentor said every day you got to, and back then I was definitely using a much smaller uh, size for trade, but he used to tell me this, if you're not ready to lose this money today, don't even consider, uh, don't, uh, don't even consider popping up your platform. Okay. You're going to be, you have to be mentally prepared to lose that amount. And then if you, uh, you're going to fight your way the whole entire duration of the trade to try to make money. Um, are the micros and micro, you can be, this is, this is an example of the full contract. For instance, if you have your entry at 80 and if you have a stop at 70, you're going to have a risk of 10 points. That's $500. That may be a lot for, uh, for a small trading account size. Uh, and then you can, if you have, if you cannot tolerate this, because it, here's the thing, if you're using $500 for a trade, you have to have at least $1,500 available to risk on this specific day okay you have to have let's say if today you want to take this trade uh you have to make sure and if you're a day trader you have to make sure that you allocate fifteen hundred dollars each day okay we're going to talk tomorrow of about the why you need to do that uh but you can definitely dab into um uh, dab it, uh, Peter, that's a good question. I'm going to answer in a second, but you could dab into micros, right? Because a 10 point stop is $50, right? And if you only want to risk a hundred dollars on the trade, you just say two contracts. Well, that's a big difference in management, right? So you're not going to be as worried as an act anxious, right? Because if you want to, and like I said, guys, and I'm often saying this, I do not dictate the stop. You do not have the right to dictate the stop and how much you're risking on the trade. The index or the commodity that you're trading or the, or the bonds or anything that you may be trading is dictating the risk level. It's dictating, it's dictating where, the, where the entry is and where the stop is, okay? All right, let's move on. Um, how often do you swing trading futures? Not often because the setups are, uh, setups are not, uh, setups don't occur let's say on a daily basis and sometimes not even on a weekly basis. Okay. So you have to, you have to wait until the setup is, uh, is, uh, forming. Uh, but if we get a pullback in the market, we may be able to, uh, depending on where the price is going to stabilize and, uh, if the price is going to hold at least, let's say 25 to 50% or even 60% of the current swing low to swing high on the daily, I'm going to be looking for a pullback buy scenario. Uh, even if we pull back to the 28.50 or 28.40 into, uh, into the mini S&P, I can still see a reversal occur into, those, uh, in, into that area. So the risk is the difference between your entries and your stops, whether you're uh, trading a pullback buy scenario with the trigger of a pullback buy or a breakout or a breakdown. Okay. Risk to reward ratio. You have to use the risk of at least two to one or th three to one is ideal. Uh, obviously, depending on market conditions and volatile market conditions, sometimes you go one to one or two to one. It's not a great idea to use one to one, but you have to look for, that's why I look for high velocity trades. And today was a very, very choppy day. We're going to talk about that in a second. Risk tolerance, like I said, if you have a small account, that means actually way less than about 20,000. Medium account is, uh, uh, is about $50,000 account and large account is $100,000. Like I said before, if you have an $100,000 account, you mean, it means that you have to digest $2,000 risk per trade. And that means $6,000 risk per trade because I use three uh, uh, three trades. I use three risk, uh, risk levels a day. And, uh, on a loss, you could lose $30,000 in a week. Okay. So that, that's a considerable, that's a considerable loss. This is a little bit more aggressive with the 2%. I, uh, teach my traders to start with small and even risk 0.5% of their trading account on each and every single trade until they start building some consistency. 
uh, risk tolerance is different than uh, risk portrayed because uh, uh, everybody's different and you can have a $100,000 account, but sometimes, even sometimes I don't risk more than $500 on a trade, to be very honest. In shopping market environments, I use, like to use half or even a quarter of my size when I'm getting in trades. Because when you're having the, the shift in the market from bullish to bearish, from pullback to, uh, uh, to rip higher or rip, you know, or just violent pullback for lower, what you want to see is uh, uh, you, you want to see some sort of confirmation, right? Before you actually go full size in. All right, uh, this is all for today, uh, but not before reminding you that we're gonna review some charts right now and I'm waiting for your questions and we're gonna go over some, uh, some levels. Uh, we do have a class that is starting next week. It's from the 17th uh, through the 21st. Uh, it, is, uh, it is the Power Income Futures day trading class. We are also gonna give you access to the swing trading class. Uh, and you're going to have 30 days live trading lab with me uh, Monday through Friday from nine to four. And uh, tuition for the class is $49.95. Installments are available. If you're interested, you can contact my team. Or if you want to speak to me, just uh, shoot me an email uh, and say, yeah, you know what? I want to learn more about the class. I want to talk to you about the class, what you can offer. But if you send an email, we're going to provide you with all the information uh, about the class, what we teach, uh, class curriculum, et cetera, et cetera, and um, a lot of uh, important information. All right, like I promised, let's go back to charts, my favorite topic, okay. So how do we do today, guys? How did, how did you guys uh, do trading today? Was today a good trading day for you? I mean, for me, it was good because I considered a cash a position and it was very good for me. I didn't lose money in the market. I had a very good start on Monday. I made money on Monday. I'm coming from a very good week last week. Robert, not so good. And I know why, because it was a crappy market. <laughs> it's no surprise. It's no surprise that, um, yeah, it, it was not a good market environment. And let me share with you why it was not a good market environment. Okay, of course, absolutely, and, and it's normal. It's normal. But I'm here, you know, um, let me go here to the one hour chart and let me shrink it a little bit. Okay. Let me put it in here. All right, so let me share. And uh, first off, we're going to start with the indices, right? And we're going to do a little bit of market outlook and what we can expect for the trading session. So for, for the next trading session, that starts in about 10 minutes from now, okay? So be ready. Uh, and uh, we're going to start now. Uh, first off, we're going to start with the indices. And this is the M&E &E Dow that started uh, that pretty much finished flat on the day. So pretty much we... Uh, we uh, closed where we uh, where we oh, we closed into yesterday's close, right? So we had a pretty flat day. What happened in the uh, evening trading session was that uh, in the last uh, last night's trading session is that from the pullback that we had in the New York trading session, the price stabilized into the Asian session, and you can see to the left hand side here that we stabilized into the prior support from the gap up right from sunday remember um uh, the tariffs the agreement with the uh mexico tariffs etc was a big hit so the market saw this as a positive uh, as a positive note and it gapped up it pulled back it held support the overnight trading session and the new york trading session took it higher and then in the latter half of the day we retest the support from which we actually started to move a little bit higher. Now, what happened here is that uh, the only index that has not made a new high was the m and &E Dow. So in today's trading session, we still, we're still we still holding the high from the gap up at 26 to uh, 289. Even though today, um, that's a good question I will share with you. This is what I'm sharing, okay, Jack? This is why I'm, I'm explaining today's trading session and why I decided not to trade. And also I'm re doing some, uh, some, some quick reviews on charts and what we can expect from, from the trading day. So just follow along. So YM was the only index that has not made a new high. All the other indices, anytime, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, 
has not made a new high. It pulled back and held support. It ran higher. Guys, these are one hour charts. It pulled back and held support. It ran higher, made a peekable high, but still did not attempt to make a new high. Okay. So in my books, it still carried a little bit of relative weakness because it is the only index that has not made a new high, has not taken that gap up resistance yet. Okay. It was not ready to commit to the, uh, to the upper side. The other thing here is, and I'm navigating now to the daily chart. You can see here that we're trading into this prior low. You see this prior low right here. This was the turbulence zone right here, right smack into the 150 level. You can see that today and yesterday we coiled around the 150 level, right? Today we pulled back all the way into this 50 simple moving average, which is a confluence zone. Why? Because it's also trading into this prior high from May and look back on the charts into these prior highs right here. And this is from March. So we were trading into a lot of resistance from 26,000 to 26 to uh, uh, 220 and 250, right? So we were hitting really high turbulence zone. Plus, you cannot expect follow through after you had one, two, three, four, five big bars to the upside. Now, stocks or indices are not going to rally more than five, eight, et cetera. Usually they go by FIB numbers, three, five, eight, et cetera, right? So fit, very FIB correlated move. So we had five bars up. So what do you expect after three or five bars? A pullback or after eight bars, you're expecting a pullback, right? So we had one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five bars up. If you know how to count, you know how to trade. Five bars up, you're expecting a pullback. You're hitting the first level of, of resistance here into the 25,960. Price velocity takes it higher into, uh, into the 289. And this, this was all, this candle right here was all the Mexico news. This candle right here. Now the market needs to digest this gap up, right? Because the market, if it didn't receive this, uh, this news here, it was hitting tons of resistance at the 26,100. And uh, possibly we could have had a continuation higher or uh, to start the pullback for lower. But right now it's into that digestion zone because it has gapped up and it's still trying to resolve this gap. But what do you see here on the chart? Let me just go on and maximize this out. What do you see here on the chart? Okay, what do you guys see here on the chart? You see that the, the, uh, the, uh, the pattern is into a complete at, uh, at most uptrend, right? So we are trading above the 20 up to this point today, right? When we have the first one hour sell and we violated the first support level at the 2658 zone, right? So we violated this. Why was I not a bullet? Why was I, uh, well, why did I not trade today? Let's go to the uh, let's go to the fifteen minute chart. When I have a big whip in the market in the first uh, fifteen minutes of trading, right, and into support, I'm still thinking bullish because we're not. Let me just shrink this so you can see price action. Okay, we're trading into the overnight highs, and oftentimes in the New York trading session, we're retesting some. Uh, some highs or some lows from the London session. They love to retest that area, okay? But this to me was very bizarre. I was in the trading room. Uh, I didn't have my TV on. I typically do not like to trade with the TV on, uh, with CNBC, with Bloomberg, or whatever your channel of preference is. I don't because I don't want anything, I don't want any noise to clutter my thinking, okay? Uh, so I don't really... Uh, no, I don't take into consideration anything, okay? Dorothy, I'm the only one that dictates what the market is going to do for myself. I do my own analysis. I, 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 just, I, I, just like to, I just like to focus on pure price action. That's it. I don't like to take into consideration anything, any other systems. I just like to focus on uh, what, what my knowledge is on the matter. Okay, so uh, right now we had this happen in the morning. I'm like, is there any tweet? Is there any news? That's right, T, 100%. <laughs> I agree. When the market is up and when the market is screaming higher, they go like, well, we told you to stay long. And if the market is moving lower, they're like, 
hey, it's a bear market. I mean, hello, what are you doing? Why are you still in? You know, I totally agree. Yeah, and they come up with, yeah, I, I know. I, I Don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. So this whip, there's no way, there's no way on earth I'm going to trade this whip. Look at this candle, the 15 minute candle. Look at the range from 150 to 260, 110 point candle. 110 point candle. To me, this is the start of some volatility. Okay. And I did not know what is happening in the market. I did not know if this is a technical move, if this is an algo move. I didn't, I didn't see, by the way, I didn't really see a big volume uh, suggesting that we have an algo move or anything of that matter. Uh, so I didn't know what was going on. I was, I was even asking our members in the trading room. It's like, okay, what's going on? Is there, um, is, is there any news? Uh, um, you know, I, uh, I started CNBC. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta see something. I gotta, I mean, is there anything going on? You know, I went to Twitter, you know, I have some news outlets that I follow. It's like, I sc scrolled through all of them. It's like, I couldn't find anything. So it's like, okay, so it's time to be very patient right now. So when I start the day, so Chan, uh, uh, Jack, does this, uh, Jack, does this, does this make sense to you? When you see a 110 bar candle, it's telling me to do what? Just sit on your hands and wait for a better, for a setup. Is this a setup right here? Is the bar a setup? No, it's not. And then I waited for the next, uh, I waited for the next 15 minute reversal. And I told my members in the room, I said, listen, I'm going to wait and see, because if this, if the price is going to move a little bit higher, this is the first 15 minute reversal that we're having in the market. And still the stop is wide. The risk is still very wide. Look at the bottom of the candle is 130. Look at the top of the candle is 190. I mean, very high, right? The risk levels were elevated today. I really don't like to see high, uh, high elevated risk levels. And especially in this it was a total chop and a, the market was in a total shock. I mean, after making a new high, luring everybody in, I know plenty of traders that were long. I received my messages. I know. And then everybody got stopped out. Okay. I'm having the first 15 minute reversal off of the sport level. And I like it. I mentioned it in the room. I said, I like this. I think that if this is going to develop into 1030, we may be heading, we may be heading higher. But what I was looking for is uh, a little bit of a move higher, shallow pullback exactly into the trigger, into the 190, and continuation higher back into the high highs of 240 and 250. That didn't happen. See, this is why I think that the perfect trading system is your own personal mind. Because even an algo here triggered along and then it got stopped out, okay? So humans are still better at trading than algos. So with, in this sense, this setup failed. So you can see that it had the rotation and it failed. Look at the next 15 minute. It hovered here, it was already 1045 and we were navigating very, very quickly outside of our sweet spot, which is 930 to 1030, okay? And this is where things start to happen, things start to set up for my trades. And I was waiting for a 15 minute setup. I still noticed the fact that I was still getting very wide reads in my risk level. And to me, this was not a good indication that this is gonna rotate. And I had the, uh, and I had the, uh, the, the precedent move has fa had failed. So I had a first rotation that failed and I was very cautious on the second one and watching. I mentioned in the room that we have this wide range here on the 15 minute, we have an inside bar and then we had a doji and I said, this is going to be decision time again. And I said, if a trade is not going to line up at 1130, I don't think we're going to have a trade on the day and especially through lunchtime. And look what happened. It triggered the 15 minute and it failed again. So this is the second failure. You had the buy and the failure. You had the buy and the failure. You had here another attempt on executing a 15 minute rotation that failed it didn't really do it and then you had further continuation lower okay so this was in the context let me just shrink it right here in the context is this a bearish market no what do you do in a bullish market do you short pullbacks in a bullish market no because it's gonna rip your face off price is gonna rip your face off it's gonna stop you out 
with vengeance. You don't short into a bull market. You have no reason. Nobody gives you the right to short a bullish market. You wait for the pullbacks. That's what patience is for. No patience. It's easy. No money. No consistency. You have the patience to wait. That's where you build consistency. And you wait for the setup to form. Okay? You wait for the setup to form. Now, this is a 15-minute chart. And you can see the attempted failures right here. Let me zoom it in right again. Right? So you can see why I started the day being bullish because we're coming from a bullish environment. What did happen a few sessions ago? All the pullbacks got bought. Pullback gapped up. Pullback up. Pullback. This is actually a consolidation. Went up. Pullback. The price went back up. So what are you expecting here at the 150 level today into 11 o'clock? You were expecting a what? A pullback buy, especially off of this uh, off of this major support zone, right? Into the 26th. And this is what's happening. And this is something that I see very often happen in the futures market is they love to trash the support level, break below the support level, get everybody in short, and then consolidate and rip higher. All right, for tomorrow's trading session, we have a, a, actually that just started four minutes ago. You can see the market is open right now. We have support level at 26,000. We're back into the support level from Friday. So we're not, we're basically flat on the market pre-Mexico deal, right? So we're flat on the market, okay? We're back into the 26K, back into this, shop box right here and this is a cluster but all this cluster is a support cluster this cluster right here from friday is establishing really hefty support zones for today's price action and you could see the gyrations now if the price you can see an alert here 26 140 if the price is going to start moving higher and if the price is going to achieve the 26 140 in the overnight trading session i'm going to become bullish back again until then, I'm going to look to see how this support level is being played out. I'm going to navigate a little bit to the four-hour chart. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Just give me one second. All right. So what is the four-hour uh, chart doing? You can see that it's toppy, really frothy up here, right? Really frothy. It has entered into a downtrend, right? Easy down, very choppy downtrend, by the way. And it has entered into this five-day rally with two days consolidation at the highs. We have a lot of support here into the 950, okay? Lots of support deriving from these prior pivot highs, okay? So if 950 to 26K is going to hold, we may get another push to the upside. As of right now, I'm not invested in any trades. I am not in any trades. I'm just a pure observer. The other thing is that we had an accelerated move up and it took a lot of effort for price to manage to trade back again above the moving averages. Now, I did get a question up here about what uh, moving averages I use. Um, Okay, I, I forget the name. Uh, I'm not going to scroll up. I use the 20 simple moving average. I use the 50 simple moving average. I use the 10 exponential moving average. And I use the 200 simple moving average. We're going to talk more about this tomorrow, about the indicators that I use. Okay, so notice that the price has rallied and it has been trading off the 10 EMA train for five days, actually six days. Actually, six days today was the first time when we actually tested the 20 SMA. It was the first time in five days. First time in five days. Price cannot stay extended for long periods of time. Price needs to test the 20. It's acting like a magnet right here. Okay. But you can see that here we have a confluence zone into the 25,800 right into these highs. Even if we get a pullback into the 25,800, we can still get a reaction to the upside. And that's going to be a good, I know I have received a question about, uh, about a swing. How often do I swing? 
if the price is going to um, um, come in a little bit into the 25,800, this may be the next rotation zone based on a confluence, strong confluence zone of support into the 25,800. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Jack, does that make sense? That's why I sat on my hands today. Okay. All right, good. Hey, Sandra. Okay, so what can we expect from the m and S&P? &E and &E S&P was a little bit stronger because it's still trading into the 7980 support zone. And that is from the gap up from Sunday. Okay, if it trades above 93, it's going back into the bullish area. So into tomorrow's trading session, if the price is going to go back over 93, 94, you're going to think bullish. And you're going to be looking for what? Pullback buys or breakouts? NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been one of the strongest index. And right now it's holding support at 74.94. You can see it right here. It was the most, look at where the gap of resistance is right now. All the way into the 86 level, right? So it's still holding on super, super, super bullishly right here. Okay, so as long as this level is not violated, the 7487, if we get a pop above 46 and 50 by tomorrow, I'm going to be bullish in, uh, I'm going to be bullish for tomorrow's trading session. For Russell, look at Russell's high right here. And this is Russell, this high is from Sunday, traded higher made a new high in today's trading session, extreme whippiness from Russell, then violated the first area of support into the 1520, came to test the support zone from the 1515, and coiling at this 1515 level. Look what it did here. Look at this trading session. Straight up, back down. Straight up, pull back, and release for higher. Okay? All right, and as I mentioned, um, just a quick look at gold because I have an alert. Just want to give you a heads up and a free trade if that should occur. Come on. Say maximize. All right, here it is. I'm going to go to the daily. All right, to the daily. This can be a potential swing trade. We add a high. We're having a pullback. We have a tap into a confluence zone. We also have the 10 EMA here. We also have support from prior price action to the left-hand side from January. And if the price <laughs> should trade over 34 and 35, this is the cluster zone. So we need 34 print and 35 print. It can start moving higher. The risk for this trade is 13, uh, 1322. Okay, 1322. Uh, for the risk for this trade. It can go back up into the 1340 and 1350. Let me know if you guys have any questions. This is a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was useful. Tomorrow, we're going to dig, dig a little deeper into strategies, into timeframes, into indicators, and all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys tomorrow. You do not need to register for tomorrow's webinar. You, you can use the same link. But remember, for the open house, you have to, uh, there's a separate registration link. Thanks so much, Peter. I really appreciate it. Tomorrow, 4, 15 p.m. We're going to continue tomorrow. Okay, and uh, we're going to continue with lots of good stuff. So I hope today was uh, very useful for you guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 4.15 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night, everyone.